Hello. This is Local Bias, and I am your host today, Julia Ellingbow. First time back in this chair in years. And my guest today is Melissa Lewis Gentry, Hi. whom I've known for years as well. Probably going on 10. Yep, yep. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about games today and how you can find fun communities to play games and what it's like to play games in Western Massachusetts and all those good things. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so. for, for having me. I'm excited. Well, thank you for, for coming on. Yeah. So tell me first about a project that you've been working on for the past year. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, it's been a little bit longer. Um, for those people who don't know me, I was the former manager, business manager of Modern Myths, which was mm -hmm. a comic and game store in downtown Northampton. Uh, that store was there for seven, just almost 17 years. Um, I, I was know, that long. Yeah, and I oh, was wow. I was in charge of it for about four, mm -hmm. um, and that closed about a year ago. And what I've been working on, and what I've actually been, it's been a project of mine for about seven years, is opening a game cafe, and we're going to be opening downtown in Holyoke, uh, late 2019, so late fall, early winter. So. I'm excited. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was your inspiration to open a game cafe? Well, um, since I was a kid, I always wanted to like open a restaurant, right? I've always been a foodie, you know, and I also really like community interaction. I'm a people person. I'm an extrovert. I like being around other people. And as, so game stores sometimes get a bad rap about not being the best place to go and play games. Gee, why not? <laughs> uh, some of them are, uh, could be updated, could be cleaned. We're lucky, the ones in the Valley are pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Definitely and compared to other parts of the state or you know, uh, other parts of the country, there's some scary places out there. But here, we're, we're pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and I realized, I, but I wanted to, create a space that was really welcoming and open it like invites people who might not think that like oh a game store that's not for me um and i want to trick those people to come in and then make them realize it is for them <laughs> aha right uh because a lot of people have these preconceived notions and really games are about having fun mm -hmm. there's all different kinds of ways to have fun mm -hmm. and it's really for everyone Really, so. Really and truly. Really and truly well, for everyone. Well, there's lots of different ones, too. Yes. Right, right. So, yeah. um, so there's Avalon Cafe mm -hmm. um, that will be opening. Uh, so we're going to be opening late fall. Uh, we're not sure the exact date yet. We're still waiting on you know permits and you mm -hmm. know there's construction going on. We're building mm -hmm. a uh, building a kitchen. Um, so, um, but you can follow us on AvalonGameCafe.com is our website. Okay. And if you uh, search on, if you're a Facebook person, it's the Avalon Lounge and Game Cafe. We have a Facebook page. Okay. And that's the official name. The Avalon Lounge and Game Cafe is the official name. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's drive from Holyoke a little further up. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, while people are anxiously awaiting your cafe <laughs> lounge right. to open, right. where else can they find games? And, and we'll, a little bit later, we'll talk a little bit about what kind of games we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of places. Mm -hmm. uh, one place I frequent, you'll find me at, is uh, for board games specifically. There's Wednesday Games does a pop-up, and a pop-up is when uh, an organization goes into a local bar or restaurant and takes over for the night and runs an event. Um, so you'll find trivia pop-up, like you find trivia nights places, it's kind of mm -hmm. like that. But instead of a trivia night, it's a board game night. Um, so Wednesday Games is the group that does one around here. And it's every other Wednesday at the Brass Cat in East Hampton. Mm -hmm. Every other Thursday at Mill 180 in East Hampton. Okay. Uh, and I think they have some new stuff going on. If you look at Wednesday Games, uh, if you either Google it or look at them on Facebook, they'll have all their schedule there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So keep going. Let's talk a little bit more about the what we call the brick and mortar stores. Mm. Yeah. So we have some great brick and mortar stores in the valley. Uh, if we're if we're continuing to head north, we're going to hit Hadley has two fantastic ones. Uh, X9 is in the Hampshire Mall. Mm -hmm. They've been there for a long time, though they've moved locations in the mall. Uh, and they specialize especially in Magic the Gathering. If you are a Magic fan. 
uh, for those people who know, yeah. <laughs> who know magic, right? <laughs> right? If you're a magic fan, they're, they're really the place to go. Their mm -hmm. Friday Night Magic's pretty hopping. Uh, they have popper events, they have standard events, they have great drafts, that sort of thing. Okay, so I know what magic is, <laughs> right? however, I don't really know what magic is. Okay. So can you give me an elevator pitch on what magic is? Okay. Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, we are wizards. Okay. Congratulations, you're a wizard. We're dueling with cards. The mm -hmm. cards are our spells, our mana, our creatures that we're summoning. Uh, and we are having an epic wizard battle. Uh, right? Uh, so that's the, the general premise of magic. Uh, and in, in play, it is, we have, we're playing a competitive card game mm -hmm. where we're, uh, we each have health points. We're trying to play creatures and play spells to reduce each other, to kill one each other, one, uh, each other. Um, and it's been 25 years that magic has been played. And so much like competitive poker, the, there's different formats and different mm -hmm. kinds of tournaments. It's all poker, but there's, you know, stud is different from hold'em and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, there's different forms of magic, um, standard and uh, legacy and commander um, that you can play uh, and that often will have tournaments with prizes as well. Okay, so you buy the cards mm -hmm. and you trade them too and you can find they have mm -hmm. cards that are collector's cards, they mm -hmm. have general packs, you have like, you get a starter pack of cards, mm -hmm. the rules are in the card pack. Yeah. You grab your friends, you play cards basically. Yeah, um, so, and if you're ever looking to just try it, you're not sure, if you go to a brick and mortar store, most of them have something called an intro pack, which is mm -hmm. usually free. Oh. Um, not a starter deck, but a ha it's like a half deck mm -hmm. of intro cards. Uh, and they often have things also called game day, which they're meant to be introduction to magic. So if you've never played before, it's like a Saturday afternoon, you can play all day, you can learn how to play. Um, I know X9 uh, does that off the wall, and Greenfield Games here in Greenfield does a really great stuff with learning to play magic. Cool. All right. Yeah. So you talk. We talked about X nine. Yeah. In the mall, mm -hmm. and then you just said off the wall. Yeah, off the wall is a little further down on Route nine in Hadley, mm -hmm. uh, and they are really well known in the community for having great Warhammer and other war games. Uh, if you like painting miniatures and doing classic like hobby miniatures and uh -huh. making terrain and having armies fight other armies, they are the best place in the valley, and I would say Massachusetts to do that. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So um, I did know what magic was, and I'm going to just flat out admit that I've never quite understood what Warhammer was. Sure. Other than painting little figurines and having fun with that, um, and measuring how many steps you go with your figurine, and I know people get really, really into it. There's, there's an artistic piece to it. But what the heck is it? So Warhammer is an evolution of you know, classic war games where, let's say, people wanting to reenact, um, usually it was World War II uh, or the Civil War, and they would have miniatures and they would stake out battles and mm -hmm. scenes uh, and try to kind of like uh, have a little war game to determine like which armies would have won, you know. And so Warhammer is the same kind of thing. You have a, a squad, mm -hmm. uh, a military, like a, a military, you have a point value and have a certain amount of military units that are facing off against another military unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're, to be honest, 50% of it really is painting the minis and having fun with them and going pew pew. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe that's me. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, Warhammer is a lot of fun. It's been around for a really long time. There's all different kinds of like, amazing aliens and uh, the the main unit is usually if you have space marines um, or, or elves if you're dark if you're into that but okay. um, it's a lot a lot of fun but yeah if you think about you know war reenactment mm -hmm. but a sci-fi futuristic version of that that's what you got where you get to paint things yeah you get to paint them because they don't they all the miniatures don't come together they're kind of like you need to assemble them and glue them together and then you can paint them so you can paint them whatever colors you want and uh, I've seen awesome like hot pink with yellow accent you know space marines and orcs and oh, you know fun. that sort of thing so nice yeah, it's, it's a good time 
Yeah. Nice. All right. So we've gone Avalon Lounge and yeah. Game Cafe. Then we went to X9, mm -hmm. Off the Wall, and here we are in Greenfield. And where can you play green games in Greenfield? A place very dear to my heart, Greenfield Games, Yay. which is right around the corner. Um, uh, they are fantastic. They have a wonderful board game night, usually on Saturday nights. Mm -hmm. Their Friday Night Magic is really huge. I know they have a couple of upcoming events. You can check out their Facebook page. They always have big event pages for that. Um, they, uh, they're really great at teaching games, too. Mm -hmm. They're really, really friendly there. So if you're someone where you're like, I don't know, um, you know, my kids want to play games, but I don't really know where to start. Um, usually there is a very tall gentleman behind the counter named Bubba. Um, mm -hmm. he's the best person to ask. Who does really great costumes on Halloween yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do great stuff. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. The, when we first moved to Greenfield, we went to Greenfield Games and we're looking around for something to do. And mm -hmm. I remember, um, Seth opened up a game for us and just ran through the rules and showed us how to play. Yeah. Uh, which is a really great way to get somebody to buy a game. And it's it's a wonderful place, and I agree. It's yeah. it's very welcoming. You can go in. They want to show you the games. They want you to come back. They don't yeah. want to scare you away. Yeah. And they have a great variety of they have board games. They have puzzles. They have yeah. outdoor games. They have role-playing games. We'll get to those in a sec. Yeah. Uh, they have, um, then they have Magic the Gathering. They also have Warhammer, right? They do. That's what I thought. Yeah. And they, then have they have everything, pretty much. Yeah. Yes, and they've used games, too. Yes. And then once a year, they also have an auction. So when It's you actually tired, going on right now, or I might, it might be ending soon, okay. or it might have ended. End of July, End sometime of July. around there. Yeah. So if you missed it this year, it'll be around next year. Yeah, exactly. And it's a good place to get new games and to also unload your games that no one in the house is playing anymore. Yeah, they're... Um, their trade-ins for used board games is really, really great. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so we've covered a lot of the game stores that we mm -hmm. call the brick and mortar stores. Right. And there are also a lot of communities, so people yeah. who get together because you don't really need a store to, buy, to play a game. Or you go to the store, you buy the game, you download the game or right. whatever. Then you need to get some people together. And sometimes when you have a game that's, say, eight, nine, ten people, that's not going to be your whole family. Right. <laughs> so, um, and then there are other types of games. There are role-playing games, tabletop mm -hmm. role-playing games, not on the computer. Um, Do you know anything about tabletop role-playing games? Have you, have you like, written a couple of them? I've written to the tabletop <laughs> role-playing games and LARPs mm -hmm. and other games. And actually, for those of us who go, I want to make this now that we've played it, mm -hmm. um, there's a game co-op, yeah. game design co-op, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, Another Castle is right here in Greenfield, and they are, one, a wonderful, welcoming group of people, mm -hmm. and two, they are a great resource. It is a blend of analog gamers, and analog means not digital. Right. Pen and paper, board, mm -hmm. cardboard, plastic, yeah. no zeros and ones. Right. So they have a combination of both analog and digital mm -hmm. designers there, mm -hmm. uh, and they're just really, really friendly folk. Um, so if you're interested in, like... Where, how do I start a design? Uh, they have this uh, Slack channel uh, that I'm a part of. I don't know if that's... Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, and it's great. And they have a... Every Friday, they have like a get-together lunch where people chat and that sort of thing. They're a really, really friendly group. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. There's also coffee and game design, which meets from time to time. Uh, they have a, a Google group. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if you look up coffee and game design, you can find that one. Yeah. Uh, there's... Um, where else have we, did we talk about earlier? There is a game designers meetup at Prodigy in East Hampton. Prodigy is a right. mini golf and video game place, but they okay. also have some nights uh, where they do um, analog games, uh, and they have specifically have an ongoing designers bring your prototypes to have them play test at night. Um, they're really, really designer oh, forward. Fun. Yeah. And when you say that you bring your, your prototypes to play test, how much of a game do you have to have done? I mean, when people sit down, you should have pieces of paper. Now, they don't have to mm -hmm. be, like, printed. They can be handwritten, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but there should be something that people can interact with. You shouldn't, it shouldn't all just be in your head. Uh, and <laughs> you can't just tell them, right? right. Give, right. give them some references, right? But you don't, certainly don't have to have a finished game, right? Uh, like, it, 
Finished games can take years. Get your, mm -hmm. get your ideas started, get something on paper, and then have people start playing it. Cool. Yeah. Yes, so when you're writing a game, that's one thing I also want to talk about. So mm -hmm. we have, there's, there's this, uh, a game design co-op. Mm -hmm. um, you can also start designing games in the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times people don't realize that when you're sort of figuring out some kind of thing, you, are, you might just be creating a game. Mm -hmm. If you have kids and you're trying to entertain kids and you're in a car and you have them go look at all the cows and count the cows, you, well, cows is a game, but <laughs> you could have them count other things and yeah. that could be your counting game. Yeah. So designing a game is, is fairly innate to human beings, I always thought. Yeah, I mean, we all love to play. Yes. Right? And a game is just playing with parameters. Right. right? A few rules, little yeah. things, a little structure. Yeah. Um, and then we have games where you actually get up and walk around and maybe even wear costumes. And people mm -hmm. like to make fun of LARPs, but it's actually one of my favorite That's things. That's how we met. Right? It is how we met, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very long time ago, yeah. yes. Um, I love LARPing, uh, and it comes from, I have a theater background. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like theater games, you know, even though I was from more of the technical theater side, like being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, LARPing, and LARPing has exploded. Yes, so what is LARPing? Let's, what's yeah. the acronym? Live Action Role Playing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so a LARP is a live action role playing game. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's become, like so many acronyms like ATM or, you know, it's just become the word for Yes, it. it's got its own noun, verb, form. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Um, so why don't you talk about, I know that you know something called Valley LARP, which Valley I haven't, LARP, yes. haven't really been involved in. So they just had their fourth meetup, Ooh. and it's very open, very welcoming. It's very open and welcoming to first-time players. So if you've ever seen, they have movies about LARPs, and you're going, all right, I know all my friends are laughing at this, but I kind of want to do that. Mm -hmm. Valley LARP is a good place to, to try that out. Yeah. Uh, they have, uh, they will have one, like a set game that could last anywhere from one hour to three hours. Okay. And they are on a variety of topics. So we mm -hmm. can have our elves, we can have World War II, you can play a rock. Um, so <laughs> last week when they had their, their fourth <laughs> Uh, their fourth meetup, mm -hmm. uh, there was a game called Still Life where you literally play a rock. Okay, I could be into that. It's really fun. It's really, <laughs> really fun. Um, and I actually play tested a game there that I've run at other places. And, um, and that one was about playing a teenager at a summer camp and meeting all your teenager friends in a summer camp. Nice. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's Valley LARP. There's, um, you were telling me one about Sundered. Yeah, Sundered Lands. Sundered Lands, yes. Well, I think we should clarify, because a lot of people, when they hear the word LARP, they think Nerf sticks, mm -hmm. right? Boffer. Boffer LARPs. Yes. Which are great, but is only one type of, of LARP. I think Valley LARP does what's called American Freeform. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you want to explain what American Freeform mm. is? Or? Well, I think that's, <laughs> that's, too there's, there's a, that's a controversy. Yeah. So basically it's playing a freeform game, meaning that the rules are going to be fairly light. You probably don't have to carry around anything, no cards or anything. The mechanics are generally very psychological. Right. So you may have some parameters in your behavior, mm -hmm. and it might be that you have a time limit. They very frequently focus on real life events. However, there are certainly freeform LARPs that are pure fantasy. Mm -hmm. And there are other versions, I think, I would say, of mm -hmm. American freeform LARPs. You might have also uh, a scavenger hunt kind of LARP. Right. Uh, there's in uh, Eastern Mast, Mast, there's the New England role playing Nero. Nero. Nero, yeah. okay, thank you. Uh, so Nero runs Intercon, which is right. a convention of what they call parlor LARPs. Right. And I would say that is part of American, well, American LARPing, whether yeah. or not it's freeform, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. You know, a lot of people even say that escape rooms are kind of LARP. Absolutely, right. Right. absolutely. Yeah. So you get in, they, they give you enough materials that you could get into a character. Right. Uh, which I think is great. Uh, oh, good. And there are there are escape rooms very close yeah. to the mall. There's there's uh, one in East Hampton, um, there which is Puzzle Escape. Uh, mm -hmm. There is one in the Hampshire Mall, which is has a name that I 
I don't remember. I'm sorry. I haven't gotten a chance to go to that one yet. It's really fun. I've been there. Something okay. about adventures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think there's one either opening in the Holyoke Mall or soon to open, or maybe it already did open. I'm not sure. Um, oh. In the Holyoke Mall as well. Um, oh. Which I think is related to the one in the Hampshire Mall. Maybe. I don't know. It's another franchise instead of yeah. an independent organization. Yeah, so these are multi-state organizations that, yes. we're, that we're talking about. So Valley LARP is local. It's um, a few people got together and said, hey, we want to LARP. And mm -hmm. then you also have, you have folks like you say, hey, I want to open a game store yeah. cafe. And then you have uh, organizations that open up stores all over the country. Right. Um, there are also some LARPs, which are just like Valley LARP that are community. Mm -hmm. Sundered Lands is one of them. They do Mind's Eye Theater LARPs. Mm -hmm. and, which is where we met. Which is where we met. Playing in Vampire. Mind, vampire at uh, Hampshire College, I think it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Um, and these are, uh, Mind's Eye Theater is specifically a uh, product uh, of a certain publisher, Onyx Path Publishing, was mm -hmm. White Wolf back in the day, uh, and they do more psychological, political, mystery, and horror type things. Mm -hmm. So less about throwing bean bags, uh, or, but there is still some casting of spells and some yeah. player, and player stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but if you like fancy costumes, like if you want to dress up to the nines, a vampire LARP's a good way to yes. do it. Yeah. There's also, there's Changeling in that mm -hmm. same franchise. So I love well, mine's, mine's Eye is the uh, sort of the live action version of, of the live action version of the uh, a World of Darkness or Chronicles of Darkness is the new uh, oh, version of okay. it. Okay. So yeah. there was Vampire the Masquerade, Vampire. Mm -hmm. the we, played, we played the Requiem. Yes. Yes. You were a gangrel. I remember that. Uh, <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> oh, man. I miss that character. I know. I she was. Mine too. She was. She, I wouldn't say she had a good heart because she definitely did not have a good heart. And I wouldn't say she was smart, but she was tenacious. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We yeah. had to fit in a little bit of tell me about your character. Oh, That's, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Games, you have to talk about, well, yeah. what was your favorite character? What did mm -hmm. that character do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's Mind's Eye, and now are they specifically doing vampire, or are they doing, there's also werewolf, changeling, where you play fairies? They have, a vamp uh, they have multiple different campaigns. I know oh. they have a werewolf game going on, they have a Vampire the Masquerade, and they're also mm -hmm. starting Vampire Requiem, which are basically different, kind of different settings for those people who aren't familiar. Um, and I think they do one more. I know they have a website, if, or if you go on Facebook or Google Sundered Lands, mm -hmm. they're based out of Amherst. Uh, okay. It has their whole schedule right there. Oh, yeah. fun. Yeah. Now, I don't really know a lot about boffer LARPs or mm -hmm. overnight LARPs yeah. or things like that. So, unfortunately, I don't have any notes or any information. Do I you know of any? know of a bunch, and I did not bring my notes because I am a bad interviewee. That's um, okay. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you all those right. questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are some great boffer LARPing in Western Mass and Connecticut mm -hmm. is generally. Uh, where I would recommend there are some fantastic ones. Uh, I can send some information to you maybe after the show. Sure. Or some great places yeah. to go. Yeah. The one thing I can think about, it's not so much, well, it is a buffer LARP actually, Dystopia Rising, which mm -hmm. is very controversial. You're playing zombies. No, you're not playing zombies. You are playing zombies. It's a post apocalyptic wasteland, so okay. you might be playing something like zombies. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there are different groups. That's mm -hmm. that's sort of the, the, the interesting odd thing about it, how they break things up. Yeah. Um, that's the one I have not gotten a chance to play, so I really can't comment too much on, on them. But I read some of the manual, the five hundred page manual. Mm -hmm. Which I think is something that often makes people go, oh yeah, I don't want to play that because the rules are really long. Yeah, um, getting into gaming can sometimes feel intimidating mm -hmm. if you don't know all the rules. Right, and that's I think, why you get people to show you the rules. Right, and that's the trick is that you don't need to know all the rules, right? I remember the first time I played a LARP, I literally had no idea what I was doing and ended up like committing some terrible faux pas which ended up being delightful story <laughs> that, the, <laughs> that the storytellers got mm. to, you know, incorporate. I think that's, I think that's a huge thing about role-playing games specifically is people were like, but I don't know how to play. I don't know all the rules. What if I make a mistake and I break it? You're not going to break it. You can't break it. No. Right. There's, there's, it's, you're, you're literally playing make-believe with other people. Right. 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 
the only thing you can do wrong is if you're trying to make someone else not have a good time. Exactly. Right? That's yeah. the only thing. If you're trying to make someone else not have a good time, then you're doing something wrong. Right. Otherwise, you're golden. Go have fun. Don't yuck other people's yum. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So we have talked about a bunch of different Ooh. places. Um, We're whipping through the valley. We really are. <laughs> um, this, this area has a lot of game designers who just seem to know each other and get together and write games and produce games. And yeah. you'll find a lot of locally produced and published games at a lot of the brick and mortar stores we just mentioned. It was funny, uh, one time I was in Boston at a convention and I was just chatting with people in line. Um, uh, and, you know, we did the, oh, where are you from? They're like, oh, we're from Sweden. I'm like, oh, great, cool. Um, where are you from? I'm like here in Massachusetts. Uh, I, you know, I live at the time, I live in a town called Northampton. They're like, ah, yes, Northampton. We have heard it is a center of game design. Oh my gosh, no, um, it's Greenfield. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Both Greenfield, Northampton, the whole valley mm -hmm. is known internationally as a hotbed of innovative game design. Uh, and we have so many opportunities here to play unique and weird and fun things mm -hmm. that just don't necessarily exist in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world. Yeah. We have a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. I love the Valley. It's my favorite place to be. Yay. Yeah. Hence your own local bias. I know, right? <laughs> I am biased. Yes, towards yeah. the local. Mm -hmm. uh, which brings me to another point that mm -hmm. please frequent your local brick and mortar game stores. You can get a lot of products online and, yeah. and also if you went to a brick and mortar store and you were looking for a specific game, they can generally offer, they can order it for you. Yeah. You can then come back and pick it up and then see and touch and feel mm -hmm. the actual things on the shelf. Right. The, the way that our communities grow and that we build these healthy communities where we talk to each other is when we interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think the more we're involved digitally now, the harder it is to necessarily connect with our neighbors, our mm -hmm. community. And games make it really easy to break that boundary, right? Yes. Sometimes it can be hard to just be like, hi, I'm, I live in the same town as you. Can we be friends now? Like, I mean, I'm terrible at making friends, but I'm really good at playing games, right? So, so then you merge those, and then you get to make some friends. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up oh, with no. that. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for, for coming out and yeah. telling me some more stuff about games that I yeah. didn't know. Not that I knew everything, but... <laughs> you know a lot. I know enough, yeah. and I knew enough to call you up and say, hey, come and, and visit. Thank you so much for bringing me out. It was lovely to get to rant about all the wonderful places in the valley. Oh, good. Well, I hope you'll come back and we can talk some more because yeah. I think we were, we were about to end on something really exciting about using games as education. As a oh. special ed teacher, that's something that I I didn't even talk about my after school programs. So. <gasps> OK, so <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to talk more and yeah. come back. Will you come back? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank you. I guess I will come back, too. Yeah. Yay. All right. Thanks, Julia. Thank you. And you have been watching Local Bias. My name is Julia Ellingbow. I'm glad to be back in this chair and bringing you some more fun stuff around the valley. So have a good afternoon.